Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we will solve one more section B problem in which we have to prepare a cash flow statement and they have asked you to calculate only the cash flow from operating activities. So first let us write the format. So in that format, first we will consider only cash flow from operating activities. In that first item, what we will be writing is the net profit before tax and extraordinary items. So for this, you have to check your balance sheet in which they have given the profits made during the year. Directly they have given it is 2,60,000. Suppose if they had given both the year amount, then the difference of that amount you should have taken it into consideration. Here also you can do this. What is your closing balance? Closing balance is 2,60,000 and opening balance they have not given anything. So you can take it as zero itself. For this, you will add all the non-operating uh, expenses and non-cash expenses, which is debited to the p and account. So let us check for those items. So since it is a balance sheet and they have not given any as such items, so you will just write it as nil. Then again, you have to deduct all the non-operating and non-cash incomes which is credited to PNL account. They have not given PNL account only for us. They have given balance sheet. So you cannot find those items. Then the amount, the answer, whatever you get, that is 2,60,000. We will call it as operating profit before working capital changes. For that, you have to do certain adjustment. What is that? You will add increase in the current liabilities and decrease in the current assets. For us, first let us classify whether it is increased or decreased. So I will add two more columns to make it ease for you. I will add two more columns. So first let us write whether it is a current liabilities or current assets. So trade debtors is current assets. Bills receivable is current asset. Trade creditors is current liability. Bills payable is current liability. Outstanding expenses is current liability. Prepaid expenses is current asset. Accrued income means the income which you need to receive is current asset. Income received in advance is current liabilities. Now let us write whether it has increased or decreased. So trade debtors. In 2021 it was 1 lakh rupees. But in 2022, it became 94,000. That means it has been decreased. Next, bills receivable. In 2021, it was 20,000. It became 25,000, which means it has increased. Next, trade creditors. It was 40,000 and it became 50,000, which means it has increased. Next. Bills payable, it was 16,000, it became 12,000, which means it has decreased. Outstanding expenses, it was 2,000 and it became 2,400, which means it has increased. Prepaid expenses, it was 1,600 and it became 1,400, it has decreased. Accrued income, accrued income was 1,200. It became 1500 which means it has increased income received in advance it was 600 but it became 500 which means it is decreased so now we have classified now it will become easy for us to write it here so first what we will do all the increase in current liabilities we will add so let us check current liabilities. So I will highlight all the current liabilities in one color and all the current assets in one color. So all the current liabilities I have highlighted in yellow color and remaining which I have not highlighted is current assets. So now the increase in current liabilities, isn't it? Let me check once again. Increase in current liabilities. So we, current liabilities, which are all has increased. First one is trade creditors. It has increased. So 
trade creditors how much it was it was trade creditors okay i will write it here it is in the second column sorry trade creditors it was 50000 okay uh, sorry it was 40000 it became 50000 if you take the difference of both you get 10000 that means during that year the trade creditors was increased by 10000 rupees next increase in current liabilities we will check yes we have outstanding expenses it was 2000 and it became 2400 so outstanding expenses it was 2400 for 2022 and in 2021 it was 2000 which has it has increased so if you take the difference of both you get 400 rupees that means it has increased by 400 rupees now that's all about current liabilities now we need to add decrease in the current assets so let us check the current assets first you have trade debtors and it has been decreased so since it is decreased we will add it back so it was 1 lakh and it became 94000 if you take the difference of both you get 6000 rupees next you have decrease in current assets that is prepaid expenses prepaid expenses it was 1600 and later on it became 1400 so it has been decreased by 200 rupees so that's all about the adding component if you take the total you get 16600 now vice versa of this that is decrease in current liabilities and increase in current assets should be subtracted first let us find out decrease in current liabilities so you have bills payable bills payable has been decreased so i will write it that first bills payable it was 16000 and it became 12000 the difference of both will be 4000 rupees next you have decrease in current liabilities that is income received in advance so income received in advance it was actually 600 rupees but it became 500 rupees there is a difference of 100 rupees so now let us come to Uh, the current assets so all the increase in the current assets should be subtracted so bills receivable has been increased it was 20000 and it is increased to 25000 so bills receivable if you take the difference of these two you get 5000 rupees that you will write it in the inner column next you have one item left out that is accrued income it is a current asset and it is increased so it was 1200 but increased to 1500 the difference of 2 is 300 rupees so when you add all these items you get 9400 rupees that you have to write it in the bracket because you need to subtract that now from 260000 if you add 16600 and subtract 9400 you will be getting 267200 rupees that is your cash flow from operations before tax and extraordinary items there is no any details about income tax paid or extraordinary items so the final answer also will be same that is 267200 rupees so this is how we need to solve the problem If you have any doubt, you can put your doubts in the comment box so that I'll respond to your doubts as soon as possible. Thank you for watching the video. I'll come back with the, some more problems, full-fledged problems. From our next video, we will be solving the full-fledged problems. Hope you have understood this video very well. Let us meet in the next video.